Gary Sheffield played 22 seasons in the big leagues, 509 homers, almost 1,700 RBIs, and two of his big league seasons he spent scared, with our Mark DeRosa. <laughs> life out of you me. You didn't have to say that. He would have covered that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, he would Spring training, Disney, <laughs> first day I walk in my lockers next to Chef. I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, uh, I was like, oh, God, it's going to be a long six weeks. <laughs> Gary, of course, is also part of TBS's Major League Baseball coverage. Welcome into hour number two of MLB Central. Pleased to have you with us. Man, I'm glad to be here, especially with these two guys here, man. <laughs> these guys know the game in and out. So. Now, now tell me, you, you got to tell me, what kind of teammate was, was Mark DeRosa there in Atlanta? Well, you know, we like to call these guys like to get, the he get, they get ahead of themselves, you know. They, <laughs> You know, this guy, you know, he felt like a seasoned vet, but he yeah. quite wasn't there. Right. And, uh, you now know. Now, you're referring, there was a team meeting. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. Mark. Yes. Uh, well, probably had a couple call yeah, voiced his Yeah, a, voiced his opinion voiced in the team opinion. meeting. Yes. And you said to him in language that you can use on TV, yes. you said what to Mark DeRosa? Well, I just grabbed him. I just pulled him by the, the collar a little bit and say, hey, kid, you haven't fought that many battles <laughs> talking. I said, as long as I'm on this team, just be quiet like that. But but, but I always respected him as a player. How great was that? <laughs> right. He'd blow me up, put me on blast. It was pulled me aside. He was like, what you said was right. Yeah. But you need to get a few more hits in the game before <laughs> I'm going to listen to your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, seems fair. Got it. And we you became like best of friends since. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you, the two seasons you had in Atlanta, what Killed was it? 30, 30 3932 Yeah, we got it right here. He, he went in 2003. Ooh. We ended up losing to the Cubs in the NLDS. Right. He went right. 39 and 132. Ooh. And the only thing I take away from that season, Chef, is when we went to Chicago in the NLDS and yeah. everyone showed up to the clubhouse, you showed up in full mink. Yeah. Yes. Mink headband. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll do, hey, baby, you look good, you play good, you feel go. good. <laughs> Let's go. So he went 39, 132, and you're bringing the mink. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because Bill, was Bill how, many, was how many minks did you have in your closet during your big league career? 0.0? Mm -hmm. Zero. .0? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Everyone's rolling in like shirt and tie, and, yeah. and it's like, all right, this guy's a star. Mm -hmm. Like, he's coming in full head to toe mink. He's ready to go deep. Wait, you know wait, what? I had yeah. Keith pull this up, though. Most homers was as a Dodger. Really? Completely. Venue, right? Florida. I thought that was pretty interesting because as a trivia question, I was right. sitting here looking at this board, going, "Okay, that's a lot of homers." Yeah. Where did he hit the most? Most as a Dodger, but this venue right here was the most. Right. Six and a half years. Mm. I want. Yeah. I want to focus. We talk. We have some of the current players come in. We've had former players come in. Five hundred plus homers, man. Mm -hmm. I watched you take BP relentlessly, and was enamored with the way you right. went about it. We got side angles, kind of walk you down memory lane, and we can pause them, we can pull them back, we can do whatever we want. Can you throw up baby face Gary Sheffield <laughs> at 19? Well, what at, were at, we trying to accomplish here? Well, they, when I came up, I back just that back. Well, I just hit. At that time, I had just hit 44 home runs in the, between Double A and Triple A. Excuse when me. I, yeah, I hit 44 home runs <laughs> in between Double A and Triple A. In Double A and Triple A. So I came up. They tried to flatten my bat a little bit, but I kind of raised it in the game. But what they were trying to make me as a leadoff speed guy, hit the ball to right field. Mm. And I was less violent. And I knew that wasn't my swing. And Almost hitting around your front head. Yeah, exactly. So when I got to San Diego, okay. the first thing my coach said to me, I'll, I just want you to pick up the ball at third base. We don't expect you to hit. And I felt that was disrespectful. I said, now what? I'm going to show you what I'm made of. And now I went back to my style. Yeah. And now I went back to a attacking style, not trying to get on base for the guy to drive me in. Wow. And so I just got, now yeah, it's, it's just Now it's basically, personal. Yes, yeah, it's, it's lift and, and separate. It's, it's now I'm going to show you I can hit for average and power. Run this real quick. Yes, that's all fingers right there. So yeah, take me through that yes. and then pause that right there. Mm -hmm. Take me through that. So what well, you're saying it's all fingers, but what? Well, a lot of guys think grabbing the bat like this and the harder you grab it, now I can get more power, but the, it's the opposite. The looser you grab the bat, and I'm hitting, I'm here with the fingers. See, it's look, it looked like it's in my hand, but it's only in my fingers. So now when I go here, in the, when it's here, yeah. it's all fingers. Now when I go back here, now that's when I'm dropping. And now hitting begins when I get here, and I go here, it's the turn. And when I go from here to here, that's when I turn on the power. See, I would think, watching you do that, that it would almost make you think subconsciously, I'm going to snap my top hand down. Mm -hmm. But you're saying almost to the point, like, that was just to get 
a nice, loose, crisp move right. in your fingers, and then it's like dancing. You're almost thinking okay, it's like dancing. Ahead. You know, I I don't. When a pitcher is deceptive, you know, pitchers in big leagues, they want to try to do different motions and throw you off as a hitter. Yeah. I don't look at anything he does on the mound till he. Sorry, sorry about that. Here. Until he gets here. Once he gets there, that's what I pick up. And now I know when you're throwing a breaking ball, a slider, curveball, I pick it up immediately. Let me ask you this question because you just brought breaking ball into the mix. Earlier you guys were talking to Prince and Sess. Sess yeah. said he looked for pitches. Mm -hmm. Were you a guy that sat on pitches at times? One pitch. You wanted the heater. I wanted the heater. You I were never like changed. Prince. No. I, so you just adjusted and see, that's where I'm it, baffled. I'm baffled that too because no. there's no way. If I'm looking for a heater, you're not getting no. heaters in heater no. counts. Because I, what it does are. is that what it does for me, I I tell you to fool me. I want you to fool me. But I'm not gonna lose on a fastball. I will not lose on a fastball. Mm -hmm. I don't care who's out there. I make you a two-pitch pitcher. If somebody, when we used to have scouting reports, yeah. you remember. And they would say, well, this guy has this pitch, this pitch, that pitch. And I would look to you, how do they expect us to get a hit? Right. <laughs> you did say that. I remember. <laughs> oh, I guess we're not getting a hit. Right. We're, we're done. Everything's They're, done. They're too good. Right. So, so what I do is I make him a two-pitch pitcher. All I want to know is what's his out pitch, the one he goes to the most when he needs it. Mm -hmm. If it's a breaking ball, a curve ball for is the breaking ball side of it, then the slider, the fork ball. I eliminate fork ball. I don't swing at fork balls. That's just, I don't swing at them. And that's what I go up there with my game plan is when I step to the plate, I know he has a, a fork ball. That, that's not even in my mind. I'm going to hit a fastball, slider, or fastball, curveball. You also said something interesting in talking about adjustments a few moments ago before we came on about you would adjust your stance, your yeah, approach, yeah. depending on the park on you the were park. playing in. Yes. Could you walk us through that a little bit more? Yes. Um, if, you, if you look at when I went to San Diego, I won a batting title because the dimensions was, was uh, fair all the way around the park. So I used the whole field. So I didn't, I didn't feel like hitting the ball to right field, I was going to lose anything. When I got to the Florida Marlins, I got closer to the plate, and I became a strictly a pool hitter because of that short fence in left field. And so a lot of my home runs came to left field and left center. You never saw me hit a ball, not, I probably won maybe with the Florida Marlins, the dead center or right center. I never hit home runs over there. Now when I went on the road, then I would hit balls the opposite way. So I always had in my mind, where, wherever I played or whatever year it was, I had to hit double digits home runs the opposite field so I guarantee that I'm going to have 30 or 40 home runs. Any of you guys doing, doing that when you're on the road adjusting? <laughs> I just followed him around like a puppy. Like, teach me anything. In fact, this, this guy, might be man. the only guy that uh, I've ever heard say that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never right? heard that now, either. Now, one would think when you go into Fenway, mm -hmm. that makes it a little bit Get different. There's probably day. some other guys that have done that. Right. But you're talking about some National League parks that are pretty big. Yeah. So Florida's big, right. except that was over there was reachable. I just ain't want to lose home runs to right center when I had a pitch that I know I could have pulled it out the park. Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium, that was fair to me. Okay. You know, I, when I got there, the gaps is fair. But at night, it get a little dewy. The ball don't carry as much. But once you get comfortable in a park, my strength was center field there. That, that park wasn't deep enough to, to hold me in that one. So I didn't mind staying, you know, within myself in the middle of the field and then if somebody wanted to come in, then I have to let him know the left field. What were some – and we can, we can keep this running because, right. I mean, some of the best side angles you'll ever see. I mean, you talk about – See, there's a lot of top. things going on that a lot of people just look at the waggle. You got to look at my right elbow. You know, I'm getting ready to – Hold on. See that right elbow right there. Now I'm in position to punch. Mm. See, I'm athletic position. Now I got my legs up under me, and now I'm ready to punch. So when Sammy, like I would watch Sammy Sosa do short toss, and he said, right. this is my steering wheel, mm -hmm. and this and puts this it in punch. the park. Yes. Because all I'm thinking as a hitter is my left side. Yeah. All I think is this side, because when I'm, when I, when I tell my kids at home, is when I hit, you have to cut this part of your body out. You got to work back here. So this part of my body is what I see back here, and I work from there. Because if I get it this way, now I'm in trouble. So I always focus on, and I tell guys, when you step to the plate, don't just stand in the plate like this. And get in the, get, get, get. Okay, get, get over the plate. Yeah. So, so a lot of kids, they get in, they look at the pitcher, 
and then they just get in the box like yeah. this. What I do is I don't look at the pitcher. I, step, I walk in the batter's box sideways, so I know I'm in the same spot every time. So all the dimensions of the parks, everything throws you off, and you think you're standing in the right spot, but you're not because if you don't go in, the, go in sideways, you're thrown off. So what I try to do is I try to get here, and now when I'm here, I'm hitting here. I'm not hitting really? at him. I'm hitting here because I want everything to work sideways. And when I go sideways, now I'm behind here. Not the I, I haven't off. went here. No so view. now everything I'm looking at is from this point on, and I work from there. And when I get in this, this motion here, when that back gets here, now it's, I'm, I'm turning it up a notch. Yeah. Now I'm going to get violent from So you were definitely dominant this? Yes. Because I wouldn't have thought that when you're watching all this go on. Yes. With this thing working up here, yeah. but you were definitely dominant. Dominant there. left hand. Play that some more, because I want to see a Yankee yeah. one, because I have a question for you. Someone get, get me to a, a lawn chair and a cup of coffee. <laughs> you have to talk about it for an hour. I'll stand, yeah. but I would like the <laughs> coffee if you can yeah. get it. But see, but if you see my hands here now working back. Now the left hand goes directly to the ball, and now the bat when the left hand goes here. Now the, that's when I turn. Can you rack that one yeah, back? Rack that yeah. back. I mean, that thing's parallel. All right, yeah. so <laughs> I, I, look, I swear. Get out of here. Uh, Myself and Junior, uh, we were doing a coach's clinic somewhere, and somebody asked me about squashing a bug, yeah. which I still don't know what that means. There's no bug in the batter's box. <laughs> we, we, we're going to hit. But there was a game of the week back when it used to be the game of the week. Mm -hmm. There was one game on. This was real. Mm -hmm. This leg was real, and I swear the ball was in frame. Yeah. Right? And the next one was, play that through a little bit, and I'll tell you to freeze it again. Foot comes down. So it was definitely a wider shot. Man. I'm not so sure where this thing ends up. See if we can get that off the ground or not. No. All right. But there was one where I swear mm -hmm. this thing was in this direction. Yeah. The foot was still here, and the ball was in the frame. Yeah. And the next thing I saw was this. <laughs> and it was a homer in the second tank. Yeah. So you didn't always have that back foot no. necessarily on the ground. No, a lot of times I didn't. You know, it, it became, you know, I had an injury to my right foot. And I had to learn how to hit like that because I had that, uh, what they call it, plantar fasciitis. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I had awful. that. Pronounce so, that again right there. Plantar fasciitis. Okay. There you yeah. go. Just plantar fasciitis. Okay. It ain't so, no joke. That's so no joke. I, I used to have to push off of that, and that bone, I mean, it was bad. So what I did is I used to get here, and then I bring it off the ground. Wow. And, I, and it was, I created a bad habit that I was trying to break when my foot started feeling better. Well, we, we, as d Rose said, we could uh, talk hitting yeah. all, day. all day. This is fascinating. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thanks we, for we having appreciate me. it. Absolutely. Gary Sheffield. Part of the 500 Homer Club and, of course, part of TBS's coverage of Major League Baseball. Thanks again, Gary. Thank appreciate you, it. Buddy. Appreciate it. it.